The Kai KF-21 Boromay is a South Korean fighter aircraft development program, with Indonesian involvement, with the goal of producing an advanced multirole fighter for the South Korean and Indonesian Air Forces. The airframe is stealthier than any fourth-generation fighter, but does not carry weapons in internal bays like fifth-generation fighters, though internal bays may be introduced later in development. Indonesia took a 20% stake in the program in 2010, and the remaining 20% are held by private partners including the manufacturer Korea Aerospace Industries. The Kai KFX is South Korea's second domestic fighter jet development program, following the F-A-50. In Indonesia, the KFX development program is referred to as the IFX program. The KFX Advanced Multirole Jet Fighter Project, intended to produce modern warplanes to replace South Korea's aging F-4D, E Phantom II and F-5E, F Tiger II aircraft, was first announced in March 2001 by South Korean President Kim Dae-yung at a graduation ceremony of the Korea Air Force Academy. The development phase had numerous delays and postponements and its economic cost was debated, but the project received renewed interest following a 2008 feasibility study and attacks by North Korea in 2010. Although the project carried risks and the expected per unit cost would be significantly higher than purchasing from foreign manufacturers, the development of the domestic defense industry was deemed to be of national importance and was expected to have a ripple effect on high-tech industries. On 15 July 2010, a partnership was made with Indonesia, which would provide 20% of the funding for the KFX project, cooperate with technological development through state-owned Indonesian Aerospace, and purchase 50 of the approximately 150 to 200 aircraft anticipated to be produced. The initial goal for the program was to develop a single-seat twin-engine multirole fighter with stealth capabilities exceeding both the Dassault Rafale and Eurofighter Typhoon but less than those of the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. The Weapon Systems Concept Development and Application Research Center of Konkuk University advised that the KFX should be superior to the F-16 Fighting Falcon, with 50% greater combat range, 34% longer airframe lifespan, better avionics, active electronically scanned array radar, more effective electronic warfare, and data link capabilities. To facilitate technology transfer, the Agency for Defense Development proposed two primary concepts for the KFX, C-103, which resembled the F-35, and C-203, which resembled European fighters with forward canards. The C-501 was a third design, proposed by Kai and supported by the Defense Acquisition Program Administration, which attempted to reduce costs with a smaller, single-engine fighter, but it had inferior performance to the F-16 and was unsuitable for the large airspace of Indonesia. Upon receiving the basic drawings of the C-103, C-104, and C-105 from ADD, the development team built an experimental model of the C-105 and began a wind tunnel experiment on the newly designed C-107, which increased the size of the aircraft and increased the max takeoff weight. A 2015 government audit placed the development cost of the project at 8.8 trillion won, 18. In an agreement signed at the end of 2015, Indonesia agreed to provide 20% of the development costs, Kai would provide an additional 20%, and the Korean government would support the remainder. The second agreement between Indonesia and Korea was a work assignment agreement between Kai and Indonesia's state-owned aerospace manufacturer PT Dragantara. In November 2017, Indonesia, through state-owned Indonesia Aerospace, failed to pay its share in the latest round of development costs, prompting criticism from South Korea. As of 2019, Indonesia was renegotiating its involvement in the program. Flight Global reported in July 2019 that Indonesia was exploring payment in Indonesia produced armaments instead of cash. By July 2019, Indonesia was approximately 300 billion won in arrears. According to a September 2020 report, Indonesia had paid only 10 million United States dollars since 2016 on research and development stage and owed about 420 million United States dollars. Another report stated that Indonesia paid 205 million United States dollars for research and development and owed about 420 million United States dollars. In December 2020, a report showed that Indonesia was likely to pull out of the project, while another stated that South Korea and Indonesia plan to move forward the KFX, IFX project. In August 2021 Indonesia reaffirmed its interest in the KF-21 program, with Indonesian engineers returning to South Korea to continue their work. According to reports on 24 May 2022, the issue of paying 4.2 million United States dollars in development costs that Indonesia did not pay has not been resolved. In November 2021, Indonesia and South Korea agreed to draw up a new sharing agreement for development costs by March 2022, but it has not been implemented so far. 
U.S. aerospace contractor Techstars was selected by Kai to develop canopy and windshield transparencies for KFX. Under the contract, Techstars will work alongside Kai to provide the KFX fighter with bird strike resistant transparencies with high quality optics. These are to undergo four years of trials and complete the development process by mid-2026. The aircraft bore the flags of South Korea and Indonesia and took off from Seichen Air Base for 33 minutes. Later developments will include equipping the KF-21 with a domestically developed air-launched cruise missile and hypersonic missile. Kita told a public meeting that South Korea is not technologically equipped to develop the KFX aircraft, that the project is economically unviable and that the KFX would not be a successful export product. DAPA's estimated 6 trillion won development cost was criticized by some analysts, who said the project could cost up to 8.5 trillion won. Defense researcher Lee Juhyong held a seminar on the program, stating that the KFX development would cost more than 10 trillion won and could cost more than twice as much as an imported aircraft over the life of the program. On 23 May 2013, EADS offered a US$2 billion United States dollars investment into the KFX program if South Korea selected its Eurofighter Typhoon for the FX Phase 3 fighter procurement program. On 1 May 2018, it was reported that Indonesia had complaints concerning the contract rules surrounding technical benefits and export licensing. Indonesian state media announced that the Defense Ministry would renegotiate the joint development program in an attempt to gain a larger share of local production, as well as export rights. According to the agenda of a January 2019 meeting, Indonesia sought to extend its involvement in the program to 2031, and was interested in making part of its payments in trade for Indonesian-produced defense equipment. By August, Indonesia had transport aircraft on offer along with commodities, 